Hi there, Jason here from AV Pro Gen Radio, and today I'm actually working on a super cool project and just wanted to bring you guys along the journey to let you know what was going on here. I'm at a client's house today, and we have a two zone system that we're working with. Everything's in a rack, a couple rooms over. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, there's a, a nice Sony Z9 TV in the living room, and there's a, a Samsung 900 series uh, 8K TV here in the uh, in the bonus room with the you know cool pool table and stuff behind me. Uh, the issue that we were having is um, I came over to calibrate the Samsung about two weekends ago and went to demo the uh, system for the client and we were getting no HDR at the TV. Started troubleshooting and eventually figured out what it was and were able to fix it and I just wanted to walk you through that journey and show you exactly what I did. So as I said before, we'll just do a quick rundown of the system can you, so you can kind of understand what's going on. There's the Samsung TV and right now I have a, a beautiful planet um, playing which is an IMAX HDR disc and uh, what you can see here on the Mermon Sing, which is a little test monitor we have that has some analyzer functions built in. Uh, we have uh, 3840 by 2160, 30 frames per second, 8 bit, 444, HCCP 2.2, and HDR off. And that's kind of the original issue that we were running into is that there was no HDR making its way from the rack into this room. Um, there's a couple of pieces down here at the bottom. There's a local Xbox. Uh, the receiver end of the transmitter that feeds this room is down here. And of course the Samsung One Connect box, and then he's got a couple of other older components in there too. But uh, that's the general gist of it for this room. And then of course we have um, some in-ceiling speakers doing Dolby Digital, DTS, all that good stuff. Uh, they did just put in a brand new Marantz receiver. Uh, so I'll go through that in a little while and just uh, do some basic adjustments to speaker levels and delays and things like that. But um, the main issue here today was the fact that we had no HDR coming out to this room. So uh, we'll take a look at the rack, some of the components. Um, I'll take the analyzer to the rack and we'll start looking at some of the outputs and we'll start figuring out why there's no HDR coming here. Okay, so here we are at the rack. Uh, the rack was done by a local integration company. It looks absolutely gorgeous. They did an awesome job mounting the components and all the wire management. Uh, you'll see that there's some direct TV boxes in here that are feeding the room we were just in, plus some other rooms as well. Um, down here we've got a uh, Sony Ultra HD Blu-ray player, we've got a couple of Apple TVs, um, we've got some Control 4 gear in here, controlling the whole entire house, we've got an Onkyo AVR that's um, feeding the living room system, and then this nice brand new Marantz AVR is what's feeding the system that we were just in. So, the fact that there's no uh, HDR going into that room means that I need to come back to this rack with my analyzer, and I need to start plugging outputs from sources into the analyzer to see where the HDR fails. So let's do that next. So here we are on the back of the rack, and this is the Sony Blu-ray player. So I want to test the output of the Sony Blu-ray player to see if HDR is at least coming out of the source. So two things I need to keep in mind here. Uh, I want to use the customer's existing cable just to make sure that, that cable is not the culprit here. So I'm going to simply take the analyzer. We're going to follow this HDMI cable down to the Marantz receiver. And it is right here, plugged into input number two. Now I'm gonna take the analyzer and we're gonna plug in that HDMI cable into the analyzer. Bear with me, I'm using one hand here. So now that we've got the analyzer fired up, let's let it sync. We do have a signal. And if I push okay, and we will see in the analyzer that HDR metadata is present. So, so far, this Blu-ray player and this HDMI cable are not the culprit. So let's keep moving down line. So now that we know that the signal coming out of the source is correct, the next thing I want to do is test the signal coming out of the, uh, the Marantz AVR down here. So the main output that's going into that other room is going to be this HDMI output right here, monitor one out. Um, this is zip tied up to the transmitter, part of the extender. So I'm just going to use my existing cable. We're going to plug into the Marantz AVR and make sure that we have HDR, uh, HDR coming out of the AVR. Okay, so I'm going to plug my HDMI cable into the analyzer and let's see what it says. There we are, we're locked on. We have a nice signal, you got a nice picture. And look at that, HDR metadata is present. So. The source is outputting HDR, the AVR is outputting HDR. The only thing between the AVR and the TV now is the extender. So let's test that next. 
Okay, so now here we are back at the extender. Uh, there's a category cable ran. This is an HD base T extender. So there's a category cable ran from that rack room over to this room. Uh, that cable comes in right here and the HDMI cable coming out is right here. So I want to take that HDMI cable and I want to test the output of this HD base T receiver. Um, so to do that, I brought again my Meridio, my Mermon Sing, a little test monitor, battery powered. I've actually, I'm using power right now, but it can be battery powered. And as we can see here, we've got 3840 by 2160, 30 frames per second, 8-bit, 444, HTCP 2.2, and HDR is off. So the failure point must be this little HD base T kit that we have right here. So what I did, I brought with me a nice AV Pro Edge ACEX 100 444 kit Gen 2. This is a 100 meter HDR full 18 gigabit per second HD base T extender kit. So I'm gonna put this kit in, do a quick setup on it, and we'll see if we have HDR here in this room. What I'm gonna do first is on this end, gonna replace the receiver with the AV Pro EX 100 444 receiver. I've already got it plugged in for power and we only need to power one side on this, which is nice. So I'm going to unplug the old cables from the old receiver, put that to the side, and we've got a couple of cables here. Um, one is the HD base T line that's coming from the other room. So we'll plug that into the HD base T input. Next, we also have an ethernet cable, which is really cool. So the deal with this is the extender kit can carry ethernet signals from one point to another. So on the other end, on the transmitter, the transmitter is gonna be plugged into an access point or a router. And what's nice about that is any ethernet port I plug into on this side now will now be hardwired to that access point or that, uh, that router. So if there was a device down here that was very heavy bandwidth for streaming, maybe in this Xbox to the side here, or maybe the TV itself, it's now hardwired to an access point. That'll give you better security and, and much better performance and speed with streaming. Then the last connection we have to make is the HD, uh, HDMI connection. That's what's gonna plug into the Samsung One Connect box. And that's all we have to do for the receiver. Next, we'll go over to the rack, we'll hook up the transmitter, and we'll see if we have HDR on this side. Okay, so now I'm back at the rack and on the transmitter side, and I've got the AV Pro LG X100444 transmitter. First thing I wanna do is I wanna set the EDIT up and the transmitter for 4K HDR. And according to the guide here, that means we have to have dip switch one down, dip switch two down, dip switch one up, which I have set right here. So from here, we simply uninstall the old transmitter. We're going to take the new transmitter. But remember, we don't have to use power here because the receiver is powering the transmitter. So we're gonna hook up the HDMI here. And we're gonna plug in that ethernet cable so his TV can be hardlined to the router. And then boom, now everything is plugged in. We've got some status lights and some panel lights. Now let's go back over to the rack. I'm sorry, let's go back over to the TV and see if we have HDR now in there. All right, guys, I am back into the main room here with the TV and we're still hooked up to the Mermon Sing. And as we can see, we have HDMI 3840 by 2160, 24 frames per second. We're at eight bits on the video, 422 on the Chroma, HCCP 2.2 and there's our culprit right there. HDR is now on. So I'm going to disconnect the HDMI cable from our Mermon Sing, hook it back up to the TV, verify that we have HDR. And if we do, then this job is done. Okay, so I just plugged the HDMI cable from the Mermon Sing back into the Samsung One Connect box. We have a picture up on the screen, which is a great sign. So drum roll, please. I'm gonna push the info button on the television. And we're gonna see if we have HDR. And boom, there we are, 3840-2160, HDR flag, UHD flag. So guys, that's it, as simple as that. We put in an extender that can handle the job. We have HDR now in this room. Now all of their HDR content, whether it's discs or streaming, will look super sweet at nighttime. So guys, that's it for me today. Pretty short video, but I just wanna show you how easy it is to troubleshoot and to fix these problems with the right tools and, and the right hardware and, and good infrastructure. So a special thanks to, uh, to this client. His name is also Jason uh, to, for having me over and, and letting us film this video. Uh, this system is ready to rock and roll. The TV's already been calibrated. 
and uh, he's ready for football season. I gave him a couple recommendations for some HDR content to watch tonight when it's nice and dark in here. And uh, he should be happy for years to come until we change formats and he redoes the system all over again. So that's it for me today, guys. Uh, feel free to check out other videos on our YouTube page. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button. Lots more videos like this coming in the future. My name is Jason. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.